Hi there, this is Dr. John Whitcomb talking about news and nutrition and what's the big deal with homocysteine. I bet you've never heard of homocysteine. Well, actually, it's been around and talked about since the early 70s that Dr. McCulley was highlighting it back in the early 70s and unfortunately there was mass hysteria going around around lipids at that time and a lot of money to be made in making statins and so Dr. McCulley got ignored and homocysteine fell off the stage in its elevation towards concerns with heart attack, stroke, headaches, macular degeneration, many of our diseases of modern of modern society and it hasn't been paid much attention to well it turns out homocysteine is important your homocysteine for example every point above seven adds a 16 percent increased risk of Alzheimer's disease and many men are in the 14 15 range which means right off the bat it's it's doubling a risk of, of Alzheimer's disease. Well, what does homocysteine reflect? It's actually an amino acid that's in your body, but it's really a shuttle bus that oddly backs up when you don't have several functions properly working. One of those is you tag and identify DNA along its length by methylating and putting a methyl group, which allows the reading enzymes to say, start here, stop there. That's one critical function. Another critical function is it is the first step. Methylating is the first step to getting rid of water insoluble gunk so that you can excrete it. When you make it water soluble, you can get rid of it. Many of our neurotransmitters, all of our hormones, have to be tagged with methylation groups to get rid of them. Now, there's a whole lot of uh, anxiety going around about methylation defects because the Human Genome Project has identified that uh, probably half of us roughly have enzymes that are somewhat sloppy in their remaking methylfolate because we sort of have a biological circle. Folic acid gets made into methylfolate. We give the methyl methylfolate passes that methyl group off to homocysteine and goes back to folic acid. Well, our enzyme that remakes the methylfolate in about half of us is lazy and sloppy or whatever. But that makes a fair number of us somewhat slow at getting rid of gunk or somewhat slow at methylating. And that has effects on our mood, has effects that are measurable on many, many life processes. The power of methylfolate and B12 are hard to measure completely, but here's just one example. If you give methylfolate to a woman wishing to become pregnant for one year prior to pregnancy, she'll have as much as an 80% reduction in premature pregnancy. Makes you want to have everybody be on methylfolate if they're trying to get pregnant. In the meantime, those of us with coronary artery disease or heart disease concerns should also be measuring our homocysteine because it rises when we don't have enough methylfolate or B12. That's the irony. It's so easy to lower homocysteine. It's criminal to have anybody with a bad high level of it. B12 and folate, maybe a little B6 thrown in, uh, maybe some trimethylglycine for extra measure, and almost everybody can lower their homocysteine down to 7. It's easy to do. You simply have to do it for the rest of your life. But you should start by getting your homocysteine measured. What do you want? A level of 7. And to reiterate, for every point over 7, 16% extra risk of Alzheimer's. What will work for me? I started at 12. I got down to 9 quite quickly, and then I had to add trimethylglycine as a source of methyl groups. And finally, I popped down to 7, and that worked. Measure your homocysteine. We all should know it. This is Dr. John Whitcomb talking about news and nutrition. What's the big deal about homocysteine?